April, and no one able to calculate how far it is to harvest. They put down the seeds blindly with sensuous groping fingers, and sensual sleep dreams subtly underground. Tomorrow is Wednesday. Who cares? Remember Eileen Farrelly? I was thinking a man might do a damned sight worse. That voice is blown through a hole in a garden wall, and who is Eileen now cannot be known. The cattle are out on the grass. The corn is coming up evenly. The farm folk are hurrying to catch mass. Christ will meet them at the end of the world, the slow and speedier. But the fields say only time can bless. Maguire knelt beside a pillar where he could spit without being seen. He turned an old prayer around. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph pray for us now and at the hour. Heaven dazzled death. Wonder, should I cross plough that turnip ground? The tension broke. The congression lifted its head as one manned and coughed in unison. Five hundred hearts were hungry for life. Who lives in Christ shall never die the death. And the candlelit altar and the flowers and the pregnant tabernacle lifted a moment to prophecy out of the clay hours. Maguire sprinkled his face with holy water as the congression stood up for the last gospel. He rubbed the dust off his knees with his palm and then coughed the prayer phlegm up from his throat and sighed. <clears throat> Amen. Once, one day in June, when he was walking among his cattle in the yellow meadow, he met a girl carrying a basket, and he was then a young and heated fellow. Too earnest, too earnest, he rushed beyond the thing to the unreal, and he saw sin written in letters larger than John Bunyan dreamt of. For the strangled impulse there is no redemption. And that girl was gone, and he was counting the dangers in the field where love ranted he was helpless. He saw his cattle and stroked their flanks in lieu of wife to handle. He would have changed the circle if he could, the circle that was the grass track where he ran. Twenty times a day he ran round the field, and still there is no winning post where the runner is cheered home. Desperately he broke the tune. But however he tried, always the same melody crept up from the background, the dragging step of a plowman going home through the guttery headlands under an April watery moon. Religion, the fields and the fear of the Lord and ignorance giving him the coward's blow. He dare not rise to pluck the fantasies from the fruited tree of life. He bowed his head and saw wet weed twined about his toe.